Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham, and this is Biochemistry One. Uh, the goal of th this segment is to take the first crucial steps to uh, mastering a, a critical topic, uh, the topic of the structure of amino acids. So as we've alluded to in earlier segments, the uh, amino acid polymers called proteins or polypeptides uh, are the by far the largest and most important functional class of molecules in all of biochemistry. And we're going to spend uh, the, a large majority of our time talking about those molecules. So what we're going to do in this segment is lay the foundation for that, to understand the monomers that make up those polymers. Let me put that in context again. Remember that uh, diverse macro biological macromolecules are simple linear polymers. Proteins are no exception. They are too. And in fact, the particular polymer is called a protein or a polypeptide and the uh, monomer units are amino acids. It's these amino acids that are going to be our exclusive focus today. Before we dive in, let me uh, forecast something for you. Um, even though I'm going to try to talk a little slowly and methodically as we get into the details of amino acids, even at that slower pace, this, there's, this is going to be a, a superficially a, a, a blitz of a great deal of detail. Now, as you'll see, the detail is quite simple to understand and to remember once you grasp it. But what you may want to do is watch this particular video once all the way through, not worrying about what you understand and don't understand. Get the big picture, then come back and watch it again, pausing it at various points to stop and make sure that you understand the, the uh, concepts at issue. So I forecast in the introduction that all of biochemistry is ultimately simple. Even amino acid structure is ultimately simple, but it takes a little while to understand how the details fit together and see the simplicity and ease of understanding and mastery that amino acid structure actually represents. Okay, so remember why we care about amino acid structure. Because the different amino acids, because of their different structures, put proteins in a position to fold up in a sequence-specific way. So the physical properties, the chemical properties of amino acids as monomers are reflected in their, the properties of their polymers that are all the molecular machines that biochemistry is mostly about. All right. And of course, we care about these molecular machines because they are the functional entities that are central to the functioning of organisms. So let's begin with a, just a generic picture of what amino acids look like. So there's already a hint here. Amino acids, even though, as you'll see, there are 20 of them that make up a polypeptides, and they're rather different from one another in certain respects. They also share a whole bunch of properties. So that's the initial focus in getting this under control, is to understand all the things that all the amino acids have in common. And that's going to be our focus here. So again, we're looking at the amino acid monomers. Here is a generic amino, amino acid monomer, uh, an amino protein monomer, an amino acid. All amino acids are built around what's called an alpha carbon. So anytime you confront an amino acid, either in a polypeptide or alone as a, a monomer unit, the very first thing to do if you're confused about what's going on, find the alpha carbon. And it's the central carbon. Notice it is the central carbon to which is directly attached three, uh, f four other specific and diagnostic things. So you can recognize the alpha carbon because of what it's attached to. The first thing is the amino group. Notice that the alpha carbon is directly attached to the amino group. This is the group that gives amino acids their name, amino acids, as a result of the amino group. This is the carboxylic acid group. Notice that it is also directly attached to the alpha carbon. This carboxylic acid group, we encountered a carboxylic acid in an earlier segment when we talked about acetic acid, for example. Like acetic acid, these carboxylic acids are very prone to giving up their hydrogen ions, therefore contributing a hydrogen ion, therefore functioning as an acid. Also directly connected to the alpha carbon is the uh, alpha hydrogen. And then finally, there is the R chain side group, which is now different amino acid from amino acid. So the easiest way to identify the alpha carbon is look for the amino group and look for the carboxylic acid group. That'll show you the alpha carbon. Then that'll identify for you the alpha hydrogen. And then outward from there, everything else, the, the, the remaining fourth item around the alpha carbon is by definition the side chain. The amino acid specific side chain. So let's be clear again. The amino group, the carboxylic acid group, the alpha carbon, and the alpha hydrogen are generic. All amino acids have them. So in, under, in memorizing the structures of different amino acids, which is something you will need to do in most biochemistry courses, you only have to remember those three groups once. 
and then you have to remember the R groups for each amino acid. As you'll see, even though there are 20 amino acids, the R groups share relationships that let you take that 20 amino acids and shrink them down to a much smaller size that needs to be remembered by remembering the relationships between them. More about that momentarily. So as I've already alluded to, it is the R group that distinguishes different uh, amino acid side chains from one another. And for emphasis, let's be absolutely explicit. The different side chains, these R groups that we're going to focus on over the next few minutes, they project outward from the backbone of the polymer as symbolized by this sim uh, simple little cartoon in the middle here. And because of their different chemical properties, they allow proteins of different amino acids to fold up in different ways and to execute different functions. And in fact, amino acid side chains are responsible in one way or another for almost every function that any protein engages in. So when we turn later to catalysis and to molecular machines and things of that nature, what you're going to see is that we're often focusing on the side groups of the amino acids, the R groups. All right. So what do these amino acids look like in detail? And we're going to march through each of them one at a time. Uh, here, to begin with, is a summary. And this summary looks really complicated. Let's zero in on it. And then as we walk through it, I want to show you gradually show you that it's simpler than it looks. So let's zero in on the whiteboard and look at all this detail. So you'll notice that the 20 amino acids are organized here uh, into groups, nonpolar, polar, and electrically charged. That's very important in understanding, um, in understanding um, their ultimate functions, as you'll see. This sheet is going to be really useful to you later. We'll come back to how it might be used. But for now, let's begin our march through the 20 amino acids. So each amino acid, I'm going to show you the way I'm showing you this one. Notice the standard letter and bond uh, diagram at the left. And there's a space-filling molecule at the right, a space-filling version of the same molecule. We'll look at both of those to get a feeling both for the structure that's easy to remember on the left-hand form and a feeling for the, the physical structure in the right-hand form. But each time I show you an amino acid for the first time, I'm not going to show you its name. And I'll pause for a moment, and then I'll show you its name. That way, uh, the second time through this video, you may want to pause each time a new amino acid comes up before I've given you the name and ask whether you can name it and ask whether its properties are apparent and comfortably obvious to you. Notice before we proceed that every amino acid has a full name. This one is, amino, uh, is named alanine. It also has a three-letter abbreviation and a one-letter abbreviation. When you're writing long protein sequences, for example, it's very convenient to have abbreviations. It, most, in most biochemistry courses, it is very advisable to memorize both of those abbreviations. With a few exceptions, the abbreviations are pretty obvious and pretty easy to remember. I'll call your, I won't in general mention them going forward, except for those few non-obvious cases to which I'll call your attention. All right. Let's now look at alanine to begin our journey. So <coughs> let's relate, uh, as we'll do only for this amino acid, all the other amino acids we'll assume that you, you know these things. Let's relate the, s the generic structures again. So here is the alpha carbon again, and notice it in the space filling model. Here is the alpha hydrogen, notice it in the space filling model. Here is the amino group, notice it in the space filling model. Here is the carboxylic acid group, again in the space filling model. And finally, the R chain. And the R chain of alanine is quite simple, you'll notice. It is just a methyl group, very easy to remember and to understand. So here is the big summary of uh, all the different elements of alanine. I'm not going to walk through these elements for other amino acids. Uh, for each additional amino acid, we're just going to zero in on the side chain because, again, all the other properties are universal. All amino acids share them. Here is alanine again. In fact, alanine is a nonpolar amino acid uh, because its side chain is just a methyl group. It has no um, um, atoms of high electronegativity to create hydrogen bonding potential with water. It is therefore nonpolar. There are a group of nonpolar amino acids, alanine being the first. So let's now look at alanine just one more time as the first representative of this nonpolar amino acid group. Here is its side chain again. You've seen it. And then here is its side chain in three different views. Notice in the middle I've shown you the standard view, and then I've rotated that view, in this case, to bring the uh, amino... <laughs>